uh, one of the leading uh, Chinese uh, stringer equipment, module equipment manufacturer. Um, so we have uh, Paulo Rocha, who is overseas sales director, is going to talk about innovative interconnection solutions to avoid soldering failures. Paulo, the floor is yours. Um, hello, good morning. Can you guys hear me? You can stand us up because. Am I audible and everybody, is it, is it working? Yes. All right, guys. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you, Shravan, for the opportunity to be here. Um, so I'm going to talk about, um, you know, the new technologies or the development of this of new cell technologies and uh, the challenges that it brings to the stringing process, mainly the stringing process, because we are uh, more known by our stringing uh, technologies. So I'm going to share my my screen because I think it's not shared yet. Share screen. So Okay, I wanted to share all my screen because I cannot find only the PowerPoint. I don't know what. So in this, okay. Okay, guys, sorry. It should be okay now. Is it good? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's now. Okay. So uh, just a fast uh, company introduction. Um, if you guys um, don't know, so we are uh, AutoWell. We are now uh, number one market share uh, worldwide in terms of stringing technology. So we found them in 2010 and, you know, 2012, 2017, 2020, 2021, 2023, we had had major um, milestones uh, in our stringing uh, technology. So um, the latest one, you know, it's it's our uh, stringing uh, hybrid stringer, which we call it hybrid, because it can do also soldering and also gluing. Uh, so we are uh, we have about over 750 uh, R&D personnel in our team. We've been supplying uh, over 1,500 stringers, you know, yearly and worldwide. And you know, we are a, a company with uh, uh, about 1.2 billion USD uh, revenue, and we are now more than 5,000 people. We are not only in solar. Just very quick, we are also in uh, lithium battery. Uh, manufacturing uh, solutions and semiconductor also manufacturing solution. And even in solar, stringing is where we started, but right now we have many other products other than stringing. Uh, we have laminator, um, crystal growing, cell printing line, many other things that you can see in the presentation if you have interest. So, so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about the development, the development trend of PV technologies and it, it's impacting the process uh, reliability, mainly on stringing. So the first uh, topic is um, the rectangular wafers, or the, say the say let's say the uh, wafer shapes. It 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 came down from M zero or one fifty six, or actually even before it was one twenty five, but. Uh, and now we are at uh, mainly M10 and M12, and now a new trend is rectangular wafers. Um, so the rectangular wafers, as you guys know, they have these advantages that they can engage the model power because you have better space utilization, and and then uh, it's uh, less likely to have hotspots. And um, so it, it gives us the possibility to have low, lower cost as well because they are better optimized for transportation, the size of these uh, rectangular modules. Or rectangular modules, and um, and also they are compatible with the existing manufacturing equipment. Mostly, you know, it's it's not a big um, issue um, when you go into rectangle cells related to uh, 
equipment uh, uh, compatibility. However, there are some issues that I'm going to show. One of the issue is a negative cell gap. It's it's not really totally related to uh, um, to uh, rectangular cells, but it's more related to module efficiency. Actually, you know the rectangular cells they can uh, to to increase the module efficiency. So you, because you 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 have a better space utilization, and also having negative cell gap will also give you um, higher efficiency on the module because then you don't have a cell gap. That means you don't have uh, a dead zone. So all the area is going to be active uh, zone. So negative cell gap requires a flattening mechanism for overlapping this for the overlap section. I'm going to show you later what uh, what we do, and also it, it requires a reduction of the stress, edge stress, the cell edge stress during lamination because negative cell gap. I think the biggest issue is actually the stress on the cell during lamination that will uh, increase uh, breakage. So this is just to show uh, our flatten mechanism. We have developed, I think, probably one of the first companies developing a, a micro gap solution with a flattening uh, mechanism. So we flatten the ribbon down to 0.1 millimeter thickness, and and then we show we, this 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 image here with the the small wires, the stem wires, show that uh, the ribbon does not become uh, weaker. On the flatting uh, area, because you know we make a, a stretching, a destructive stretching test, and they they all the ribbons they they broke not on the flatting uh, area. So ribbon mechanism, ribbon flattening is is a let's say easy easy solution. Um, <clears throat> But then the ribbon flattening is not enough because overlap cells, like I said before, overlap cells will suffer a higher pressure during lamination and breakage will increase. So the solution here is uh, the reduction of the cell edge stress during the lamination. And we developed a system that is inserting a kind of pressure absorber in each single overlap cell edge. So this system is like a, is, is a, is a very innovative. I cannot share much details about uh, how it looks like, so there is no picture so far, but it will uh, re resolve the problem of uh, cell stress during lamination and breakage uh, during lamination. So it, it successfully uh, eliminates the breakage from the lamination process for negative um, cell gap models. Another issue related to uh, wafer, rectangle wafer is the uneven cuts. Some companies, they, they, they cut the rectangular wafers not totally on in half, so it's like an uneven uh, cuts, and that will bring uh, two more problems. One problem is that the same cell pieces or two pieces of the same cell will end up in two different uh, model references. Um, so this will, this is gonna complicate the, uh, the traceability. And for that, we develop and we've been actually investing heavily in uh, intelligent uh, equipment and software. So by with, with this um, software uh, skill and background, we can resolve this issue and we can actually increase the traceability ways of uh, so traceability options for uh, for uh, PV manufacturing. So that's resolved. Um, and then another issue is that it's not possible to have an integrated cutting and springer equipment. So because as you know, in the past, uh, uh, that is a big trend that cutting cells and stringing cells is becoming like one integrated equipment. But with this uneven rectangle cells, we have to step back and still need an offline cutting equipment for uneven cells, because then you have an uneven different, different outputs of products. Let's say one, one cell is gonna be one half cell or one cell cut in half is gonna be smaller than the other one. So you need to have a, a standalone cutting device that can separate two different uh, output products. So we develop a new, uh, we had to develop a new uh, cutting uh, system, NDC cutting uh, for standalone uh, operation. Uh, another thing that's been um, challenging the industry or the stringing process is the, the Cell thickness, as you know, cell thickness is being reduced and reduced because you know it uh, decreases cost of the cell and cost of the module. So right now we are about 
to 120 and it's expected to go even down eventually to 70 microns. Um, so we've been adding some challenges. Um, <clears throat> the reduction of the cell thickness comes from uh, the, the reduction of the wafer thickness. Uh, as you see on the left top, reduction of wafer thick thickness, it's not a big issue because the cell will just become more flexible. As Christian mentioned before, the cell will be more flexible. It's, it's more fragile, but it's more flexible. So from our, from our system, we have to develop um, less handling uh, uh, operations, let's say. And, um, and then we have been developing uh, uh, integrated process so that we, do, we have to, to use, to do less handling as possible. So we, we, we must uh, develop a process that cells are being handled as low as possible. Bigger issue is the reduction of the bus bars and fingers heights. Let's say the, 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 the silver paste used in thinner cells uh, usually is reduced also to reduce cost and because you know the wafer is, is, is uh, thinner so usually the paste uh, is also thinner. And when having thinner paste, it's gonna create a bigger problem because that's gonna directly impact the soldering issue, soldering process because you have less solder metal. So your process window is gonna be narrower and um, you, your process needs to be more controlled and more efficient, otherwise easy to create finger breaks and uh, over overburdened uh, solder spots. Um, so less solder metal, you know, it's obvious it, it, it's equal to higher temperature sensitivity of the material. So what we did regarding this um, issue with the um, temperature sensi sensitivities, um, um, we developed uh, multiple step soldering with a slower temperature ramp up. So we increase temperature slower than we did before. Uh, we have continuous heating sources before we had uh, on and off heating sources. Now we have continuous heating sources. We had uh, reduced, uh, I mean, th this this gives a consequence, which is reduced temperature overshooting. Uh, so the, the the set point is actually more accurate and, uh, and, and then it's a low, it's lower. So the lower max temperature, the, the set point is at the lower max, maximum temperature. Um, there is a controlled temperature cool down as well. So other than heating, we are also controlling the cooling. Um, uh, single cell is, is uh, soldered before we used to, to, to do soldering on multiple cells. At the same time, now we're doing only one. Uh, actually, this also improves the cell gap tolerance because when you have to move uh, cells or we have, you have to index the, the process on a one cell stroke, you, you can, you can um, improve the cell gap tolerance. Um, and then we do a smart monitor, monitoring of the temperature patterns. That means, you know, we are using IR soldering, which, which, which does not allow for a real, uh, for a, for a real closed loop temperature, but you can do a smart monitoring of the cell pathogens, patterns, and then apply that for a, for a further, uh, solder cycles. Um, and then on the NDC, I put this in a different color because cutting also thinner cells, it's going to require uh, higher precision. And, uh, and, um, and so we had to upgrade our cutting systems with, um, with, a uh, lower tolerance uh, uh, laser heat and, uh, and a higher precision also on cool down because NDC happens with a temperature shock. So you have to be more precise on the temperature that you apply and also more precise on, on the cooling that you apply because thinner cells, they absorb heat and they react faster. Um, the next uh, topic would be the bus bar increase. As you know, bus bars has been increasing from 2 BB up to almost 0 BB now, or 24 BB, 24 wires. Um, and that brings also many, many challenges uh, to the stringing process. Um, this slide is about the SMBB. I'll talk about some, uh, some, uh, some what are the main, the main challenges of increased bus bars, of course, is uh, uh, because the bus bars are thinner and because 
thinner bus bars also they get more sensitive to soldering and uh, positioning it's more difficult so it, they require much much better handling uh, uh, and much precise handling uh, systems um this is just so the smbb's uh, technology is the last let's say um last uh, um, technology that came up <clears throat> except apart from the zero bus bars uh so the rework the rework ratio that's the, there's a graph about the rework ratio it's uh, it's similar to uh, what the one of uh, MDB that was successfully implemented by us so we can we can say and it's proven that SMBB is running same uh, performance as a as a MDB let me go here to the to the problems that's uh, more interesting so uh, not more bus bars, it's equal to thinner wires and, and uh, thinner pads, it's other pads. So um, the problem that come with the uh, thinner pads, or thinner wires in this case, is, uh, is uh, S-shaped wires and misalignment. Um, and, um, and that is also a lower yield due to more bus bars because the more solder points you need to do, the more likely you're going to miss some of them, right? So the more bus bars, the more likely the yield are going to be is going to be lower. Um, though, because as you see, the wire thickness this is just uh, an information. The wire thickness it's in, in the past few years came from 0 0.33 mm to 0 0.2 mm now, um, and also the wire alloys become softer. So the wire is more is softer, is thinner, uh, and there are more wires, so it's more difficult to handle. So what we what we um, implemented or the solution for this is that we have a both sides and continuous wire holding. So we are holding the wire continuously from both sides, um, even when the wire is placed on top of the cells. This transferring is done with the hundred percent control. Let's say the wire is never released. And once the gripper releases, the some other um, holding device is is there. And we have a much higher uh, camera, a precision camera for cell alignment because cell alignment then is going to also play an important role. So you, you need to also be stronger in vision systems so that you can align the cell to a proper uh, accuracy. Then the robots, of course, that uh, pick and place the cells, they need to have also very high accuracy. Um, we also redesigned the pin pattern that say that the pins, they apply the pressure for soldering. This also needs to be redesigned to allow for uh, free or smooth uh, ribbon expansion during uh, the soldering temperature um, to avoid also because the, the, so the S shapes, because if you have too much pressure, then the ribbon expansion cannot be easily, uh, cannot happen smoothly, and then it will create S shaped uh, ribbons. And then we have a dual pin engagement position that's also you know, related to the to the, um, the fact that we need to control the ribbon uh, at, uh, from both sides and continuously holding it. So we developed a dual pin engagement position to allow for uh, continuously uh, ribbon being held. So that's basically for the, for the, as a conclusion, let's say, which I think is interesting, the number of bus bars, basically, you know, you need to have better control almost in everything in the soldering because uh that is less metal you need to have a better control on ribbon handling because ribbon is is uh, is uh, smoother and is uh, is uh, thinner um and you need to also be have better control on the pressure that you apply for the soldering because that will have uh higher impact on the alignment and on the on the ribbon behaving behavior during the soldering. Um, the next uh, technology is more recent is the zero bus bar, which is uh, using 24 wires, which is mostly used for AJT. However, it's also compatible for Topcon. Um, but uh, the, the benefits of this is that there is a, a less silver, so there is a, a cost reduction because you don't use bus bars, uh, you use, use only fingers. Then uh, there will be an efficient improvement because uh, there is substantial less shading by, by the fact that you don't have bus bars. Um, and then you have more wires 
uh, we right now the trend is uh, to, to 24 uh, wires and that will give you of course uh, a less current resistance and that is that is a, that is a potential highly reliability on this because you are using low temperature and because there is no bus bars so you, we can say that um, alignment requirements are lower so uh, did I say this is a potentially reliable because it's it's, it's a, a quite new, maybe like six months to a year uh, technology that's been uh, developed. So it still needs a lot of testing and a lot of uh, proving. Um, so one of the, some challenges on the zero bus bar technology is a screen printing because you know when you do zero bus bars you have to print the glue or the ECA on the cell and that happens in the stringer uh, or in the cell interconnection station or the equipment and and the printing stability is a, a little bit issue due to different materials used uh, because each is each customer has its uh, glue type some customers have ECA so all the material is not standard yet so it's a little bit more tricky to develop the process um then you are soldering on fingers you are not solving on a bus bar so the the the, the, um, the the solder quantity is even lower because there is no bus bar at all that is just fingers so this it becomes more sensitive um the solder happens between the stringer and the laminator because it's a it's a it's a low temperature soldering and um it's not fully um, standardized yet. Some companies go one direction, some companies go to a different direction that I will talk about in the next slide. And Hello? that, that is, Hello? Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, can you finish in a minute? Because you exceeded your time already. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> zero bus bar technology, these are the issues. The adhesive is placed between the fingers. So it requires high precision. The glue is very sensitive to temperature fluctuations. You know, the, 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 the sticky state of the glue is very easy to, to, it's very difficult to control. And the EVA also needs to be different because you need to have an EVA that will block, that will not block the contact between the ribbon and the, and the, and the cell. And the inspection is also more complicated because you have uh, known soldered strings basically, and you don't have bus bars. So sorting cells based on power is also more complex. So this is a, these are the, the the top line here in this slide is the the SMBP. The other four are the zero bus bar. As you can see, there is four different technologies right now for for the zero bus bar. Is a DC printing, dispensing one, dispensing two, and smart wire. Smart wire is most known by uh, by Meyerberger. Then a DC printing is uh, just printing. You apply the the you apply the the DC by printing. And then dispensing, of course, you apply by dispensing. And one, some are before soldering, some are after soldering. So adhesive one is applied the adhesive before UV bonding. And then the, the, the second technology or the second way of, to do it is uh, applying the soldering the wires first with the IR and then applying an adhesive and curing the adhesive after. Mm -hmm. But bottom line, you see SMBB so far as much as a higher yield and lower equipment cost, whereas most of the uh, zero bus bar technologies, they still have medium to low yield rates and they have medium to high equipment cost. So just another highlight, this is, I can be very quick here. This is just one of the stringers we developed, as I as I mentioned before, that can it's an hybrid stringer that can do um, IR soldering and screen printing with UV. So let's say gluing is compatible to five to 24 bus bars, or even down to 0.2 millimeters. And it's connected to, a, it can be connected with a NDC uh, cutting. Uh, it's very high speed, 7,100 cells per hour. And it's upgradable to IBC uh, cell technology too. Uh, we are also developing an intelligent system. So we, we achieve traceability of cells via wafer making and, and uh, cell decoding. We have a self-learning AI function that will do uh, it's working mainly on inspection stations like uh, vision and the you know, inspection systems um, and we do and we uh, statistic analysis functions for automatic identification of normal devices and then out of that it will come uh, it will the, the equipment will, will call for for maintenance future we are uh, of course working on a cost reduction and efficiency improved mostly in uh, on the innovative uh, the zero bus bar technologies no wall soldering approaches or different uh, soldering uh, functions that 
you know, with our connection uh, ways. Um, and then we have to we are developing integrated uh, solutions to to save labors and energy consumptions, centralized material feed, it's uh, logistics with AGVs and stuff. And we have also unmanned, it's, let's say, it's an interrupted production and unsupervised AI systems. Basically, most important smart manufacturing with AI, because we also have a huge uh, investment on software. So that's all for now. And uh, sorry, I was a little bit too slow, probably. But um, anyway, I hope you. It was interesting to see some challenges that we face Absolutely. developing our equipment. Yeah. I think uh, this is also very nice. So, well, the way you showed the zero bus bar, I think this is really interesting looking at.